Well, hello and welcome to our today's webinar, Data Exchange with Argos and Symphony, um, with the example of uh, Inland Code Beamer and BMW TC. So this is what we will uh, show live today. Um, before we start, um, let's just have a look at, at the agenda and a few, a few hints regarding technical uh, stuff. Uh, first of all, we'll share a few words about ArgoSense, and then we will um, quickly uh, inform you about the ArgoSense solutions and uh, more high-level um, presentation regarding general error management in the automotive world. And after that, uh, my colleague Christian Mittel, who is sitting next to me, will give you an impression uh, with a live demo um, for a data exchange with uh, BMW TC portal and Intland Code Beamer application. And after that, we will follow up with a Q&A session where we can give you the chance to uh, ask your questions and we hopefully can, can answer them. So a bit about ArgoSense and who we are. Um, ArgoSense was founded in 2009 and we started uh, especially in the tool integration and data exchange area so this is uh, our main focus we have uh, since we founded the company and uh, anyway we added an additional product uh, for traceability and requirements management to our product portfolio which is available since 2013. Um, one I think very important point is that our um, employees all have a strong expertise with all the leading products in the LM space, um, not only with our own product, but they all understand and know um, all the leading tools, which we believe is very important uh, in consulting and helping our customers uh, finding the right uh, solutions and implementations. Um, software is all designed and made and supported here out of uh, our German headquarter here in Korn Westheim, close to, to Stuttgart. So this means uh, we are operating our support organization, our consulting organizations, uh, also sales and marketing directly from, from here. And I think one of the most important points is that um, our product development is really um, aligned with let's say the feedback we receive from the market and especially from our customers. So you will see that uh, all the new features and functionality uh, um, coming into the products are mainly driven by our customer base and the requests um, coming from there. So this is something what we really live here uh, within the company that we are listening to our customers and um, bringing that into the products. Um, talking about our customers, um, of course, we have also some, some customer references. So if there's a need for anybody of you uh, talking maybe to one of the customers um, you see here, maybe in the same branch or maybe also in another branch, um, we, can, we can try to establish a connection. Um, most of our customers are more than happy to talk with new prospects or other customers of Argosense and give them firsthand information regarding our company and our products. So let's see what we have to offer. On the one hand side, uh, what we already have been talking about is Argus and Symphony, um, which is used for automated B2B data exchange as well as for ALM tool integration. So we are not only um, connecting different uh, systems from different uh, companies or parties, we or our customers really use the product very heavily in integrating internal uh, tools and tool chains um, to have a homogeneous tool chain and to really retrieve uh, the best possible traceability between all these different disciplines here behind. And the second product I already mentioned is called ArgoSense Fidelia. This is a requirements management solution and has at the same time uh, very good possibilities to use it as a traceability product so we can uh, we can display and manage um, trace information out of different products uh, within a single uh, interface and in a single platform, so to say. So let's go back to our 
today's focus, Sargus and Symphony. Um, before we go to uh, the data exchange, B2B data exchange, just a few words on uh, the tool integration part of it. So as I said, we can all we can connect all, I would say the major tools. I think it's a list of about 40 plus tools in the meantime. You, you can see the, the number of tools we are supporting on our, on our website. Um, and can bring them together to, to a, a complete development process. So all the tools behind these different disciplines like requirements management, change defect management, and so on. Um, and combine them to a, to a complete process or tool chain here um, that, as I said, ensures that you really can trace information between these different uh, disciplines uh, without any any loss of data or without any any break in communication here. Um, of course, integration is not just purely out of uh, out of the box. Uh, um, hard coded, so to say. So our system is very flexible in terms of uh, customization directly to your needs, which is very important. I think we will see that a little bit more also in, in Christian's live demo. And um, in the market, it's often called best of breed um, um, support. So uh, usually our most of our customers, they cherry pick out of these different domains here, the, the tools that best suit for them um, regarding to their requirements. And then they can use Symfony to bring these tools all together here. So this is, I would say, the main the main uh, purpose and object how, how customers are using them. So for today's topic, uh, data exchange um, with Argus and Symfony, it's, as I said, the same system, but just used in a slightly different way. So what we can also use Symfony for is um, connecting um, different uh, IT systems which are not directly located in, in our customers' own IT. So we just need either an, uh, an access to, to, the, to the third party, to the remote tool, or we can also base that exchange uh, on, on, for example, uh, exchange files with, which have different file formats, for example. Um, in the automotive industry, we, where we very often uh, see uh, so-called customer or partner portals, uh, all the, the large OEMs like Daimler, BMW, Volkswagen, Porsche, and so on in Germany, especially, they have uh, such portals where their suppliers can, can connect to and directly retrieve the data which they need to, um, to synchronize between the parties. Um, this is something we will dive in a little bit deeper in the, on the following slides. And of course, uh, it is very important to, uh, to all these parties, especially for um, in, in, in the world of very fast changing and, and new upcoming projects that we really can implement um, these exchanges very, very quickly. Therefore, we have means like, for example, so-called synchronization templates here. And um, as I already said, we are supporting a lot of um, standard formats as well as specialized supplier portals, um, which are mentioned here. Also, which I also will share a few more words on that as well in the following, on the following slides. So let's have a look at uh, these, the special use case here: data exchange, uh, error management in the automotive industry. So, what is what is the system? Uh, the situation usually, of course, development cycles decrease more and more, get shorter. Quality and security requirements increase. So, mm, usually, <laughs> this is something um, which is uh, it, uh, yeah um, influencing uh, each other. But anyway. Um, our customers are faced with these challenges, of course. Um, what we see more and more, of course, is uh, that the integration and, uh, and uh, communication between suppliers and car manufacturers get stronger and deeper uh, over time. And uh, as a result, usually of the increasing number of projects of uh, the more required communication, of course, there are more efforts in terms of coordination um, and also of uh, communicate uh, in time uh, regarding, for example, errors and, and also the fixing for these errors. 
for that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the OEMs usually provide supplier portals. They can access uh, either via maybe a web interface where really a physical person can, can um, operate on that, or they are offering kind of APIs like REST APIs, or maybe they are uh, just offering um, some kind of FTP server where they put um, the requested data in, in a kind of a data format like XML. Also, so this is these are the ways usually um, how data nowadays are um, exchanged between the different parties. So usually the OAM uh, determines for their suppliers um, on the one hand side a technical access. So for Daimler the system is called Dante. For BMW they have two systems called Panama or TAAC, which we will show later. Uh, Porsche has an own, um, and as well as Volkswagen has their own system. And on at the same time, they usually also determine the process side of it. So how the data will be synchronized and uh, which rules are behind that synchronization. And to give you an impression about how this can look like, here's one slide of one of our customers um, for which which shows you, for example, um, the state transition and how the different state transitions are connected um, between, for example, OEM and supplier. So this is just one easy or simple example, um, for example, here for a new defect submission. Um, this can be um, as complex as you can can imagine uh, for different projects. Uh, it, it's also different uh, for different um, customers, of course, or different OEMs. So this is just a small example about how uh, workflow and data synchronization um, are, are managed here and should be, of course, represented in um, kind of a data exchange process, which will be automated. From the technical perspective, again, uh, usually we, we have the situation that uh, we have the both parties, the OEM orders, um, let's say, kind of a control unit from, from its, from its uh, supplier. They start developing, of course, and then they uh, first they make their own tests internally. They have their own change or defect management system. Um, then when they have a certain uh, degree of development, they will provide their customer with a sample so that these guys here can make their own tests using, of course, their own defect and change management system. And now, of course, they would like then to uh, bring over all the, the, the defects and bugs they have found to their supplier in order to fix, to get them fixed. Uh, so, but how are they doing that? As I said, um, there's either a web portal available for the supplier where the developers can log in and see the data, but usually they want to have them directly in their own defect management system. So um, the OEM provides the interfaces as, as discussed already, XML based or REST based. So, but how really does the data get to the supplier and also back from the supplier to the OEM. That's the really interesting stuff here. Um, so for that, we see or we are faced with different requirements from, from our customers. First of all is, of course, workflow and data synchronization. That means um, the coordination of the given processes and with the internal workflows. So um, for example, the OEM determines the workflow and the supplier has to align this workflow with his internal workflow, uh, which is maybe represented in his change or defect management system. Then it should be relatively easy to, uh, to maintain that and to implement that, of course. And it should not only work for one project, of course, it should be, it should work for multiple projects and from the supplier perspective, also maybe for multiple customers, uh, best case. So from the technical uh, perspective, uh, what we see here is um, that we also need, or the supplier needs to uh, understand and adapt to the portal specific formats and APIs, which are determined and given by his customer. Um, and usually they expect 
that the data exchange will work completely automated without any manual work, which of course makes makes most sense. And so that they can really uh, make a reuse of that technology for the reasons uh, mentioned before, um, for reuse of in, in, in different projects for different uh, other customers as well. And they mainly want to be independent from the internal tracking or change management tool so that maybe they will change it in future so that they can still use uh, the system uh, regardless of which system is used uh, internally sometimes we have the situation that even even within one company there are different tracking or change management systems so it should work with all of them of course and last but not least um, it is very important that the system, which is usually then running in the background, is really reliable, um, especially with uh, high data volumes and a lot of exchange intervals. That means uh, some kind of, I would say, um, um, load balancing or failover security should be already implemented um, into such kind of a back-end uh, system here. So what are the alternatives which usually are on the market? As I said, the, the developers use the web interface from the given by the OEM, um, which leads usually uh, very often to double, um, double inputs and, and which also leads maybe to errors and, and wrong inputs, of course, as everything is going manual. Um, some customers, before they got customers of ours, they used to uh, use their own individual program software, uh, which of course has a high effort and uh, very extensive maintenance over time as systems change in, in, of course, over time and have to be, have to be maintained and changed. And with Symfony, we believe uh, it's of course the best of all solutions because it's completely automated in the background. It's flexible um, with regards to what the OEM needs and also with what our customers or the suppliers really need. And it can be extended at any time. And it can be also used for internal data integration um, as well as the, at the same time. So let's see how this picture now will be continued if uh, we would also implement here then Argus and Symfony. So then, for example, on the supplier side, um, Symfony will be will be available. Then they can retrieve uh, with the uh, specialized portal adapter, for example, for Daimler or for BMW. They can retrieve the data either directly via the REST API or we can also read and understand and interpret the XML formats which are given by, by the OEM. So you as a supplier, you do really not have to care anymore about how this is all implemented. We just take the data and provide it and put it into your internal system. Um, and of course, uh, the way back is exactly the same. So if you have uh, worked on these defects you have received, also, the, depending on what you agreed with your with your customer, we will report back, of course, to the OEM uh, the changes and the resolutions and everything. So, from a complexity point of view, um, as a supplier, you will not only have uh, with your OEM one project, and you will not only have one uh, OEM as a customer. You usually have more than one customer. And you can use the same system with Argus and Symfony for all of these projects. And of course, also for multiple projects within one customer. So this is very important. So everything here will be maintained within the Symfony platform with simple configurations, uh, with a clear um, administrator interface where everything can be configured and implemented for all your data exchanges. So only one technology for all your data exchanges. That is very important. And maybe to add one more uh, complexity, of course, uh, first or second tier suppliers have an, uh, uh, maybe a second level of suppliers and it can be also used for them as well. So this is the, this is the message here. So as I said, <clears throat> we support different OEM portals and um, file formats and also uh, API formats. 
So that means right out of the box, we are supporting, for example, BMW, Panama, TIC, and so on and so on. Formats like uh, ASM a, a, a issue uh, or Excel uh, are supported here because um, some of the OEMs, they do not have a direct REST API. Uh, so they use um, well-known and um, well-known formats like the ASAM formats, for example. And of course, on the internal side, we uh, support a lot of, of tools for change and defect management. And just to name some of it, uh, you will see them here, as I said, the complete list is always on our, on our website. Okay, so this was the first and larger portion of my um, um, PowerPoint presentation. Now I will hand over to Christian for the live demo and he will show us how to configure Symfony and how to retrieve data from TC and put it into, in our example here, into Code Beamer. So um, what I will do in the meantime uh, is switch to Christian's screen, just a second. Good. So, so what I have here, here, what I have started here <clears throat> a couple of minutes ago um, is this latest version of Symphony. Um, as Ralph already uh, showed us, I have installed a couple of, of components. So first component is the TC adapter, which does all the communication with the BMW portal. Um, as we can see, I'll just go into the configuration uh, list of the TC adapter. We can have as many different configurations, means we can talk to many different um, servers. Here in our example, I have connected us with the development environment at BMW, so specific URL, like all the security related stuff, credentials. Um, those are the typical um, configurations we take to, to connect to a server. Um, then I installed the CodeBeam adapter, pretty much the same story. I can use the CodeBeam adapter to talk um, to any number of different CodeBeam servers. I just put in the, the URL of the server, the credentials and the project I want to work with. Um, I have then installed our basic template uh, so that is going to bring most of the synchronization, uh, synchronization functionality like a best practice uh, that we have co been collecting in the past 10 years. And I have then installed the default TZ to code be more uh, process. Uh, it's also ready built, ready to go. We also have these um, these processes like TZ2 JIRA, TZ2 HPALM and everything is, is, is ready built. Um, on the configuration level of the process itself, I have just been setting up a first project. So you can imagine like if we, if you remember Ralph's complexity slide, if there's a growing number of projects that you're gonna exchange with BMW, just the number of configurations here is increasing. And <clears throat> that configuration just puts together like which TZ server we want to talk to, which code be more uh, server we want to talk to. Um, then we usually have to decide, this is specific to code Beamer, which of the trackers we are going, going to drop the data in. Um, I was choosing for a box tracker. And then also we have to uh, define a couple of what we call mapping scenarios. And these mapping scenarios then are descriptions of the data transformation. So mappings, themselves are maintained inside the mapping module. Um, again, we have kind of a folder structure here. So in my example, there's only TZ related mappings, but if you remember uh, Ralph's complexity chart, there's also then maybe download under related, partial related and so on, like folders. And inside we're gonna find what we call mapping scenarios. Um, and I have been setting up one example here. That's a description on how we're going to translate the data. So source side is a BMW side, destination side is code Beamer side. And at any point in time, I could just go ahead and add some more, some more stuff like say, oh, the error occurrence, I'm going to map it to, to another destination field. Um, the other configuration aspect in Symfony is usually uh, what we call the scheduling. 
a same kind of concept. We have like a folder structure, any kind of BW related schedules, then comes Daimler related and so on and so on. And then inside per project, usually one configuration <clears throat> on when the exchange is going to happen. So I can just, we can just check here. It's a, it's a cron type of configuration. So we can bring in pretty much any kind of, oh, let's run this at eight o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 11 and so on. That's pre-configured. Um, and last but not least, what we always have in Symfony is uh, a live view into the system. So that is what we call the process diagnose. That's showing what is really going on in the moment. So I had a little shock this afternoon when I looked at the dev environment so that we have collected 1,200 new um, bugs to be exchanged. So I started the process already. And as you can see, there's a little indicator on where we are little calculation on how many um, how many of these um, synchronizations went good how many failed um, there's an underlying as an underlying um, transaction model behind that so the way symphony is going to deal with these synchronization is in the first place we're going to make up um, the scope so we're going to ask back and say how many of these these items have to be synchronized so in our case almost 1200 and then we just we just process them step by step, um, and this this processing is also can also be done in a fail-safe mode. So if you have, if if it happens, you have a second server, you have a cluster of two servers, um, and let's say the first one the first one you would just simply shut it down. The second one would take control and not not restart at the very beginning, but just continue. That the transaction has already uh, gone to. So for 68 are preloaded. Let's check the code BIMO side. Um, here's our box tracker for 70 are, are loaded, for 71 are loaded. Um, and due to the nature of the of the TZ development environment, this is randomly generated content. So it's not that's not very beautiful, like the blood description and any unique identifier. So as the process continues is 476 and then we can double check just back to the uh, tracker itself 478 and so here is how the synchronization goes along. Um, so that's pretty much um, pretty much how the story works. As I said, um, these combinations with the tools are are already like are already pre-configured so whatever you need, um, we'll have the right process in place already for you. So I guess that's all from my side. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Kristen. Um, just to get, back, get you back to my slides, I will change the screen again. Okay, looks good. Um, yeah, so what you have seen here, um, in that in that previous slide for example like this one here um, this is already implemented in, in in the in the process template so you don't have to care anymore about how your mappings how the process has to be set up so for for example for bmw or for all the other oems uh, where we have the adapters for everything is more or less ready out of the box and i think it's maybe about maybe less than a day of configuration work to, to, to start the first project. And following on that, if you want to implement additional projects, it's only a few mouse clicks away from, from getting started here. So this is how this, how the system more or less, more or less works. Um, before we go to the uh, question and answers session, I just have, I think, three or four more slides. So just to give you an idea about additional functionality, uh, we would like to uh, uh, inform you about. So one is uh, what Kristen already mentioned, that Symfony also has features for automatic uh, horizontal load balancing. So if you <clears throat> install, for example, a second Symfony server, um, they will talk to each other and if one of the two servers is overloaded or cannot take any any more um, new processes, the other server will take over and at the same time, for example, if one server is failing completely, the second or the third or the fourth servers are taking over the load and uh, um, not starting the jobs from scratch, but they are um, continuing the jobs from where the failing node uh, ended up with. 
Um, second thing, I already explained that one, um, that we, second thing is that, of course, we can also co um, transfer contextual information um, and, and attachments, for example, the um, transfer of hierarchies and structural information of, ed of elements um, can be transported, depending on, on the tool, let's say combination, uh, of course, some don't have uh, any structure or hierarchy in, then we cannot build one, but if uh, there is one uh, included, we can we can make use of that and transport it also to the target tool. As I said, attachments. Also, um, some tools have special um, comment um, fields. We, we can support that. And uh, Symfony also has kind of a multi-tenant capability. So that means that you can split the system um, into for sub administrators, for example, if you want to have some some uh, structure that into departments or projects, then you can give uh, permissions just to see uh, what is happening in a, in, a, in a certain department. So, however you wanna you wanna maintain that. So we will simply offer uh, the feature for you here. Um, of course, uh, the processes you have seen here uh, on Christian, this is only one process, but you can have multiple processes running in parallel. So the system also scales uh, from, from that perspective. And at the same time, uh, we are not only able to uh, start a process based on this on a schedule. They can also be started maybe on a on an event or manually. Um, event means, for example, if you have uh, Jira, they have so-called server-side event trigger. So if somebody sets maybe a project state or a state of an item to, to another value, this could be an indicator for Symfony to start a synchronization. Um, and of course, which is very important, uh, we have kind of an intelligent data linking. So we know, of course, uh, the, the the, the pairs of the ID, so the BMW, in this case, the BMW IT ID for the item. And uh, if it goes into CodeBeamer, it gets a CodeBeamer ID, of course. And uh, Symfony is uh, recording the combination and the key pairs. Um, and we are using this information, not only that we know how these two items belong to each other, we also use the, this information um, to record when and what we have uh, exchanged data and what the content of the data is. And with the uh, with using that in combination with checksums, we will only um, synchronize data uh, from which we know that it has changed between two synchronization uh, schedules here. So we really minimize the traffic uh, significantly. We're not only synchronizing everything which is in your database or in your project only the stuff that has, has been changed will be will be synchronized back <clears throat> so and um, so this is my last slide for today so here you will see a few just a few of uh, the advantages in using using argus and symphony so i would now look into our questionnaire panel if there are any questions from your side just have a look here so currently there are no questions so please let us know if there is anything you want to know no currently i don't see any questions so that means that I would like to, to thank you for your time and watching this webinar. Oh, by the way, there is there are questions now coming in. So I was too fast. Uh, there is one question related to, I would say this more licensing thing, if you can change uh, and adapt into another one. I would like to point you to your to your sales contact and to clarify this question probably with your sales con contract. I think it's also depending on um, what kind of agreement uh, you have with with Argus. And so there's no there is no general rule for that. Usually we do not change products um, 
but maybe there's there's some chance I don't know um, there's another question do you implement a solution yourself or leverage client IT system integrator um, so what we are usually doing uh, we are offering our consultancy services to our customers that we implement the solution um, as I described earlier it's really not that big deal of implementing um, it's just a, a matter of hours and a few days I would say depending on the complexity um, but anyway we are also offering trainings uh, training and uh, coaching sessions to our customers so that they are completely um, free of implementing everything by themselves which is uh, really not a big deal here. So I would say a two days training maximum uh, will bring you in a position to maintain the system by yourself. No, so then again, thank you very much for your time and uh, hope to see you again in one of our next webinars or maybe directly speaking to you at one of maybe at one of our trade shows and conferences we are or directly uh, in your in your house um, if there's anything more you need to know just contact us uh, via this information you see on the screen we will provide you uh, of course with the presentation also with the complete recording of that webinar we'll send you a link to that and uh, if you are already in contact with us i think you already have um, a sales or, or service contact you can refer to so Again, thank you. Thank you very much for participating and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye.